Hey everyone, Kachi Vestra back to another video for today. So let's talk about Alibaba. I've talked about this a couple of times on this channel. I shared my views on owning this particular company or any other Chinese stock out there. Obviously there is risks to it. Right now, a lot of you might say there is risk, but the reward outweigh the risk. I agree with you that if Alibaba were a US company, it would probably be worth around two to three times what it is worth today because if you look at the metrics, like trading 12 months revenue, I think it's around 2.8 times. So it's pretty cheap compared to all the other big companies out there. But again, there is the China risk attached to it. Now, surprisingly, in the last couple of days, Alibaba has gone up, I think around 10% or so, while the broader market has gone down each and every day. Funny how that works. But in this video, I want to show you what's been going on with the company, a couple of moves a couple of people have been making, and then talk about the potential of owning Alibaba because, again, it is a good company, but it's in China. And also, if you want to invest in it, obviously, if you buy it in the US, you don't really own the shares directly, it goes through a VIE structure. If you can buy it on the Hong Kong exchange, it's a bit better. But again, if you're just here for the short-term gains, don't really care about voting power, etc., you just want those numerical gains, then it doesn't really matter. Unless it gets delisted, then obviously that's a problem, but that's attached to the risk of buying a company that is Alibaba or any other Chinese stocks. Now, let's jump into this video. So the first thing I want to talk about is obviously the increase in the portfolio of Charlie Munger, and then the continuous investment in China by Ray Dalio. Ray Dalio, it's not new, he's been bullish on China for a long, long time. I highly suggest you go read his book. There are also some extremely good videos and interviews here on YouTube. I believe he went on Lex Friedman's podcast not so long ago, so do check that out if you're interested. But Charlie Munger, for example, he has basically doubled his position in Alibaba. As you can see right here, Alibaba Group Holding, he went from 302,060 to 602,060 basically a change of 100%. And then Ray Dalio's Bridgewater raises $1.25 billion for its largest China fund yet. Now, obviously, recently it hasn't been sunshine and rainbow if you invested in China, right? Real estate crisis, CCP regulation, ban on gaming or excessive gaming, cannot profit from educational stuff, etc. But will that continue in the long term? I don't know, because it does hurt the Chinese economy has hurt the growth of the economy and that's something that China obviously does not want to happen. They know what they're doing. But the short term, yes, it has hurt a lot of investors. It might continue to hurt in the short term as well. But in the long term, if you look at those companies, Alibaba, Baidu, JD, are they going to grow over time? Most likely. And also, if you look at it from a monetary perspective, if you compare the US dollar to the Chinese currency, you see that actually it has lost 1.8% over the last year. In simple terms, you can buy less with your US dollar in China. Also, China's interest rates are around 4% or so. So if the economy slows down significantly, they can very easily lower rates and print more to support the economy, as they've actually done more recently. Compare that to the Fed, it has already used most of its ammunition, whereas China can still adjust its policies. And before I continue to the most important part, I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. You all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment. So I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 free stock picks from their popular product, Stock Advisor. Now, Stock Advisor has beat the market by more than 4x. So all you have to do is go to fool.com forward slash couch investor to get your free 10 stock picks now. Also, very important to note is that China is very, very focused on infrastructure, on supply chain, whereas the United States has always been focused on financials. And if we talk about cloud, more on the software side. Again, with cloud in China, it's more infrastructure. As we see here, Alibaba Cloud has a 38.3% market share in China. That was from the Q3 numbers. And the top four, which was basically Alibaba, Huawei, Tencent Cloud, and Baidu, make up for around 80% in market share. So clear to see here that Alibaba is the clear leader in that segment. But touching back on the point that, well, 
the cloud market in China is more focused on infrastructure, whereas the United States is more software. We have some more numbers here. The cloud industry in China is forecasted to grow over 30% compound annual growth rate until 2025, reaching around $87 billion. This is driven by infrastructure, which differs from the United States, where software is a larger area of spending. And from a strategic point of view, obviously, if you invest much more in infrastructure, in supply chain, that's much, much better in case of, let's say, a pandemic, a war, or some other disaster that happens around the world. Owning the infrastructure, owning the supply chain is much more important than owning the financials, and China knows it. Hopefully the United States takes note. All right, now moving to the last couple of points, and that's obviously the great success of China's Singles Day. If you don't know when that is, that's the 11th of November, which is basically 11-11. It's like Amazon's Prime Day, but a bit bigger. We're going to look at the numbers right now. So they reported GMV for that Singles Day of around about $83 billion. It grew 15% from last year. So it basically proves a resilience in the Chinese e-commerce. Because if you remember in the last earnings report, Alibaba mentioned that the macro environment is slowing down the e-commerce segment. And that's why obviously the last print wasn't that good. And one of the main reasons why the stock took another big hit. And to further prove their point, another competitor, Pinduoduo, their earnings report wasn't great at all shows again that JD is taking market share and that Alibaba Sprint was not just a bad miss and they don't know what they're doing. It is proving them right about the macro environment and about the fact that JD is just taking more market share right now. And last point I want to make. Obviously, if you invest in Alibaba, you know that their main market, their main bread and butter is from China. But they have a big presence in Europe. They have a big presence in Latin America as well. Latin America, we all know, Mercado Libre is big there, C-Limited, Amazon, but Alibaba has a presence there as well. Maybe next step should be, or maybe would be, African continent. I'm sure they're looking into that. I know China has been investing a lot, a lot in Africa, and the world isn't really taking notice yet, which is a bit dangerous if you ask me. But overall, if you invest in Alibaba, you're not investing in just a Chinese company that just focuses on the Chinese market. It's going more globally. I'm not gonna lie, I buy stuff from AliExpress. You basically buy the same thing you can buy in your store, but for cheaper because it comes from the source. Yes, shipping takes a long time, but at least you're paying less. Overall, I do not hold Alibaba personally. I do not have it in my portfolio. I used to have it a long, long time ago, but right now I do not. I know a lot of you do not want to invest in Alibaba because of China and because of the risk, but I also know that a lot of you are investing in Chinese companies and probably you own Alibaba or JD in your portfolio because again, those are great companies. It's just unfortunate that those companies are Chinese one and the CCP likes to have a witch hunt. But overall, it's a great company. Risk reward, reward right now is I think much, much higher than when it was a year or a year and a half ago. That said, I will add it to the channel's portfolio just to see how things will evolve over time. And that will be it for this video. Let me know down in the comments below if you own Alibaba or any other Chinese stock. Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, maybe hit that subscribe button. And as always, guys, take care, stay safe, and see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.